Hi, my name is Josh Turner. Today we're going to take a look at how to play Do I Ever Cross Your Mind, as recorded by Chet Atkins with Dolly Parton. To see a full performance of the song, you can click the link up here. Um, and otherwise, we're going to dive right in. This song is in five sections uh, that we're all going to take a look at separately. You can find them in the progress bar, uh, scrubbing bar below um, in chapters. And uh, the sections are the introduction, the first verse, the first solo, the second verse, and the second solo. They all have some things in common, um, but they all have enough differences to take a look at them separately. If you want to jump ahead, you can just find them below. And at the end of the video, you can find a full playthrough uh, of the entire song slowly. Let's take a look at the introduction. This song is in drop D tuning. The introduction begins by outlining the melody. This shape of a D major is something we're going to be living on a lot, so get used to it. So we've got our alternating bass thumb going here, and that's going the entire song as well, between the low D string and the high D string. We're going to then slide to this shape up here of a D7 sus. And the trick with this when you slide up is that you need to make sure that you're not muting the high E string with any of your fingers because we're going to play that open high E string next. And then we're playing that same E note on the fifth fret of the B string a moment later. Then we go to a, a shape of G here, where we're just muting the A string with our ring finger. And back home. So. And then it continues on into the second half. This is a little bit tricky. You're going to take your index finger, which was holding down this A note here, and you're going to hammer down onto the string, but you have to hammer with the middle of the digit, because if you use the index, if you use the tip of the finger, then you would have an open string there that you don't want. And then do the same thing again landing on the D note on the B string. So then we continue on. And then here I like to just take make an A6 bar and take the en entire finger off. So that concludes the bulk of the introduction, and the introduction finishes uh, with a figure that's going to repeat a lot through the song. Uh, Dolly and Chet sing together, ba ba da ba da ba 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 da ba da ba da and we're gonna double that on the guitar. The important thing here is that there is a position shift in the middle of this phrase. So it starts out with hammer on to our familiar, uh, our familiar D shape. need to change position here so that our pinky is on the on the third fret of the B string our middle finger is on the second fret of the G string and the reason for that is we're going to a G chord here for the second part of this little motif and we need to be able to have the G string open shift Take some time just getting used to that and playing it smoothly. So you can get it up to speed. Hey, <laughs> I can't talk and play it. I can sing and play it, but I can't talk and play it. Uh, 
and then every time they get out of it, there's a fun slide up into the fifth fret on the low string. And right back into our alternating bass. Let's take a look at the introduction slowly all the way through. One, two, three. Let's take a look at verse one. Chet is playing an accompaniment underneath Dolly's beautiful melody, um, and he's got this figure that goes from a D to a D major seven, to a D six, to a D dominant. And uh, the first thing that you can do is familiarize yourself with these left hand chord shapes if you haven't played them before. You played the, this D in the intro, this D major seven right here, which is a partial bar on the second fret with the index finger. D6, just a two finger voicing, and then this D7, which is a bit of a reach if you're not used to it, with your pinky finger up here on the fourth fret, your index on the first fret of the B, and your middle finger on the second fret of the G. When you add Travis picking to that, it sounds like... You're going to keep these two fingers down, your index and middle, and you're going to slide them up to a G shape here, which we played in the intro little pull off on the B string with your pinky. So again, the first half of that verse is. And Chet really likes to slide the entire chord up into shape, so that's what we do to round out the first half of verse one. Uh, the second half is very similar. Except this time, we go back to the major 7 rather than playing the dominant 7. Uh, and then right back to the D. And then the A partial bar, like we played in the intro. We, we briefly quote the, the D motif we played in the intro. This time, we're going to chromatically walk up to a B to play a B minor, which I guess is over chorus one, you could think of it as. We alternate between the B minor and the D there for a moment. To a wonderful D7 voicing here, which is just, uh, I think, easiest to play with your ring and pinky because they were just down close to this for the uh, B minor. You just play the four lowest strings. And then here Chet does a fun little thing where he's imitating an upright bass. So we're muting everything with our palm. And slide back into this. So just to keep track of where we are here, at the top of this verse, we play our chromatic movement twice. Well, sometimes I go walking through fields where we walked. And the first time you play the seventh chord, which we then slide up into the G. Long ago, in the sweet used to be. And then we play the chromatic motion again, but we skip the G7. And the flowers still grow. But they don't smell as sweet as they did when you a picked them for me. Uh, me. And when I and then we go up to the B minor on the chorus. I think of you, B minor, and the love we once. Here comes the D7. Ooh, how I, and then we palm mute. Wish I could go back in time. Kind of following Dolly's melody 
wish we could go back in time. And then uh, the end of every chorus ends the same way. It ends with a slightly different voicing of that chromatic D motion we've been doing. Do you ever think back on old memories like that? So we have three shapes of D again. D major, D major 7, D6, D major 7. Or do I ever cross your mind? So, verse 1 all the way through. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's take a look at the first solo in the tune. Technically, I think this is supposed to be Dolly's solo uh, in the original recording. You can hear Chet say, now pick it, Dolly. Um, but uh, Chet's accompaniment is so uh, virtuosic that it really sounds like it's just his solo all the way through. So we'll pay attention to what he's playing during this portion of the song. He starts out by uh, doing some nice voicings up the neck here. with uh, alternating bass and sliding into each of them. Let's hear that again. I think it's easiest to play this D7 shape with uh, these three fingers because you have to get up over the body of the guitar. And then he proceeds to these three shapes. moving our index finger down from the 8th fret to the 7th fret to the 5th fret with a partial bar, and we're throwing our ring finger on the 7th fret of the B string for the last chord. So all together those opening 6 chords. Uh, and then he moves on to a G7 shape where we've got a partial bar across the uh, top 4 strings. There's a hammer on and then a pull off with a pinky there on the G string. And slide into our old familiar D at the end. Unfortunately, that's the easy part of the first solo. Uh, after that, uh, Dolly says in the recording, All right, Chet, run off and leave me. And, uh, and Chet does precisely that uh, in a way that unfortunately leaves me behind as well. I can show you what Chet plays in the original recording, but I can't perform it up to speed, so I'll also show you the modified version uh, that I use when I'm performing this song. Um, so after he's gone up here... What he plays, uh, he switches from uh, a Travis picking bass to using his thumb pick as uh, a plectrum, and this is part of why it's advantageous to use a thumb pick on this song. This is what Chet actually plays in the recording. One, two, three, four. But that's about all the faster that I can play it. Um, I haven't had any luck with that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. If you're a certified guitar player, uh, <laughs> then then good luck, uh, and and I hope that you can actually get that lick. But uh, if you're a mere mortal uh, like myself, then here's a way that you might try modifying it to get a little bit more success and to get the speed up to where the song needs to be, which is more like here. Uh, what I play is I slide uh, from this chord 
from seven to nine. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. I think this is a lot easier to play because you're only doing eighth notes for most of it with just one triplet at the end um, to give that final flourish and make it a bit more chet like. And again, you're just alternating picking with your thumb pick. Starting with uh, an upstroke. That's the only tricky spot, the only triplet that's left in here. He ends on that major seventh in such a beautiful way on the downbeat. And I wanted to preserve that. You're going to probably want to spend some time on that, because at the real tempo... Even the simplified version uh, is a pain in the ass. Uh, after that, he plays this beautiful rake on the top three strings. And after he plays these two notes, he mutes them so it's just the, um, it's just the C sharp ringing there. And then a little single note line. Back to this familiar territory. You're out of the weeds. So here's Chet's part on the first solo at a slow tempo. One, two, three, four. Let's take a look at verse 2. So on verse 2, Chet's playing the same harmonic motion as he plays on verse 1, um, but he changes the voicings just to develop the arrangement some. So here are the shapes. D major. Uh, effectively an A major chord, but we've got a D in the bass. A D major 7. D dominant 7. I guess this is really a D6, and then a D dominant 7. Uh, add nine, and then uh, a D major seven, uh, add nine as well. Uh, so with the Travis picking, that sounds like, and he starts this one, he starts a lot of things on the offbeat, but verse two starts right on the downbeat. Three, four. Uh, how he ends this with a slide up into this uh, D major 7. Make sure that you're really targeting these two notes and that you don't let, let your E string ring too loud and drown them out. And then he resolves it. And then, uh, in the second half of the second verse, he plays a very familiar little phrase here, which comes right from the chorus. And 
and then we're right back into this. This is all the same. If you want to this time, rather than just playing uh, this four note voicing, we can play the full D7 at nine by just putting a bar here uh, with your ring finger instead of one note. Back to the bass thing. Same as we've just did. Uh, and that concludes verse two. Easy. Finally, let's take a look at uh, the second solo section of the song. Most of what Chet does in this is, is emulating uh, an upright bass sound, and part of the way that he gets this is by shifting his right hand uh, a little bit forward like this, like he's, you're putting your uh, wrist a bit more um, perpendicular with the guitar rather than parallel to it. And the advantage of doing this is that you can play rest strokes that sound like that rather than which isn't as full. You wouldn't really get a nice beefy tone there um, by resting the thumb pick on the on the adjacent string. Um, so slowly this part goes. He starts with a slide down into it. I'm kind of farting these notes out here a little bit because I'm over accentuating, but uh, more practically it sounds like. The one thing that you, the one little nuance in here you want to make sure to catch is uh, he does a pull off from five to open at one point in the middle there, which is very idiomatic to upright bass. It's something that upright bass players can and do do. Um, so uh, make sure to catch that and, and bring it out as much as you can. Second bit. And then it ends with uh, an open low D string because we're about to change positions. I'm sliding way up into this uh, voicing of D major at the 7th and 10th fret. So the melody there is... Practice playing that melody on its own with your index finger barring. and then practice it with the alternating bass thumb. One thing you're going to encounter is that your thumb kind of runs out of room as, you're, as the melody moves down the strings like this. And you're just gonna have to kind of share real estate between the melody and the alternating bass on the D string there. Like that. And he slides from this partial bar right on down to fret two. And we're home free. So here is solo two, all the way through, slowly. One, two, three, four. And that concludes the tune. One, two, three.
first one. solo one. Verse 2. Solo two. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you aren't already subscribed to this channel, it actually really does help if you do that. Um, so please consider it, uh, especially if you've watched to this point in it. Um, good luck. It's not an easy tune, um, but it's very satisfying. And I hope you get to enjoy playing it as much as I have. See ya.